Now let's move on to how we could amplify things much more easily. As I said before, previously we had only bacterial cloning in order to amplify DNA. Now when you think of how long it might take, even though bacteria reproduce fairly quickly, it could take a long time to get a lot of copies of DNA. PCR machines really... Uh, upped the ante on our ability to create a lot of copies of DNA. In fact, an infinite number of copies of DNA of interest. What we are doing with a PCR machine is replicating DNA in vitro, so in a test tube. We take the DNA that we're interested in and we will heat it up. This is how the process works. We heat it up and separate the DNA and then we ask the DNA to replicate. We cool it down, primers will attach to it, and the DNA will become replicated. And then we can cool it off and heat it up again. Now the key is this heating to separate the two DNA strands. It's hot enough to separate the hydrogen zipper down the middle, so we can have two pieces of DNA upon which replication can work then we need to somehow attach primers. Well, if we keep it hot, then the primers can't stick, so we cool it down. So when we add primers to the test tube, the primers will stick to the DNA. Now we are going to add a DNA polymerase. The DNA polymerase works at a particular temperature, but it might be too warm when we heat it up for the next cycle, because this is cyclical, right? We're going to ask it to polymerize, then we're going to heat it up again and separate the DNA strands. We need a DNA polymerase that can withstand heating. So somebody found DNA polymerase, great idea, in bacteria that inhabit hot springs in Yellowstone National Park. It's called Thermus aquaticus bacteria, and we call it TAC polymerase. So we can then use TAC polymerase, which will polymerize or add nucleotides to a DNA sequence at a much higher temperature than normal. And so we can allow DNA polymerization to happen in these heating and cooling cycles, while DNA polymerase can be maintained in the heating. So essentially, we split DNA, replicate it, it anneals. Then we split DNA, replicate it, and anneals. So every round in the PCR machine will double the amount of DNA. In this sense, we can have an infinite number of DNA molecules created, which is really cool because now we can take a very small amount of DNA, for example, from a crime scene, and amplify it infinitely. So we can run DNA fingerprints, we can rerun the prints. Previously, if you only had a little bit of DNA, you couldn't do much testing. You might have one shot, and if they asked you to replicate the test, it wasn't possible because you were out of DNA. So PCR has really changed a lot of fronts, especially in DNA fingerprinting, but also in um, DNA analysis. If we're looking at embryonic cells and trying to determine whether an embryo has predisposition to certain conditions, the DNA can be sampled from a cell and or one of the cells in that, and it can be amplified. We don't have to take a huge tissue sample to see if DNA contains any of the particular markers associated with cancers and such. So PCR is really a groundbreaking technology in um, genome exploration. <laughs>